You're watching ZTV. You're watching ZTV. All right, we're going to take communion. So if you would like to go grab some elements, that would be awesome. And if you've already taken communion a couple of times this week, it's okay. I took communion like three times on Sunday after all the church services that I watched. So it's not going to hurt you. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I am Zari Banks, and I want to talk to us today about prophetic alignment for this season and um, how God has walked us through everything that's going on, given us all kinds of good revelation about what's been happening and telling us what to do in advance so that we could be protected and prosperous in this season. And... Um, so let's go ahead and give thanks and then and take communion. So Father, I just come before you and I thank you for this opportunity to be able to share the words that you've given me in this season and the way that you have carried us along. I thank you and I praise you for who you are and I thank you and praise you for covenant relationship. I thank you for Jesus. And Father, we lift up this um, body and blood representation to you. We declare the blood of Jesus over ourselves, spirit, soul, and body, and declare a bloodline around us that cannot be crossed but upon pain of death. We declare that um, we confess any sins that we've committed in word, thought, or deeds since the last time we came before you in confession. We nail those things to the cross of Christ and declare we are the righteousness of God in Christ, and the enemy can no longer use those sins to accuse us. So, Lord, we lift up the representation of the body, and we declare we partake in in the whole of the divine exchange. Jesus said that if you don't drink my blood and eat my body, you have no part in me. So we declare to every entity in the spiritual realm that we have part in Jesus by taking communion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All right. Communion is something that, you know, you should take on a regular basis. A lot of churches only take it like quarterly or once a year or something like that, which I don't really understand because the Bible says every time you get together, you're supposed to do this in remember of Jesus. And it's one of those things that helps us stay healthy. It helps us stay protected from the enemy. It reminds every entity in the spiritual realm of our covenant with the Lord and, um, it is. It reminds us of Jesus. It helps us stay focused on Jesus, and it helps us to stay um, sinless and in confession and in right standing. Because the Bible says that if you take com communion without um, confessing your sin, then you condemn yourself. And most of us, will, before we take communion, we remember we're going to repent of anything that we've been doing, and then that brings us back into right alignment with the Lord. So if you take communion on a regular basis, it's going to be to your benefit more than um, anything else. And I heard one of the prophets say that that um, she was actually, she's from Israel and she's a believer in Messiah. And she was saying that communion was going to become more and more important as, as the days go ahead, which it is because it's one of those supernatural benefits that we have that um, helps us to walk in the glory of the Lord. So you definitely wanna be doing that. But I wanna to talk to us about a bunch of things Today, I haven't done a live video in a long time, but this has been such an, a really interesting season. Um, I've been stirred, you know, to the point of irritation because of the um, lockdown and stuff like that, which is, it's most of it's unconstitutional, you know, in comparison to the numbers of, of outbreak cases or flu cases, I mean, that we've had. And, you know, being told to stay in your house and all the stuff and the things that they're, how they're picking and choosing what you can do and what you can't do. So things like that have really stirred me to righteous anger. And one of the reasons, that, or one of the things that we're supposed to do as the body of Christ is we are supposed to act as the governing body on this earth. You know, God didn't put us here so that we can have things happen to us. He put us here to legislate. 
Jesus gave us all authority and he said to conduct business until he comes, you know, until he returns. So we're the ones who are supposed to be determining what's going on in the earth. And a lot of the body of Christ has been just allowing things to happen for decades and decades and decades. And I've said this type of stuff before, but it's like, this is really my season, you know, because these are things that I have said for time and time again over the years, you know, learning to take a dominion and walk in authority and all of that stuff. And now this is one of the seasons where we have to be walking in authority and we have to take dominion. You know, somebody, someone was saying earlier today that um, people were price gouging on milk and all kind of stuff. And I've seen that type of thing. Well, the great thing about having dominion and authority through the body of Christ is that you can take authority over that stuff. You know, you command the prices to go down to what you need them to be. You ask the Lord, if you need to go get toilet paper, you need to go get something and stores are sold out, you ask the Lord where to go and get that stuff and he will direct you when to go to the store and he'll direct you what store to go to. You know, so you want to be paying attention to Holy Spirit in this season. But um, the Isaiah 9, 6 tells us that the government of the Lord will never end. It says that it's placed on Jesus's shoulders and it's established under righteousness and justice. So anywhere you see um, unrighteousness and anywhere you see justice, that means it's contrary to God's kingdom, to the kingdom of God. And as a believer, you are supposed to be changing those things so that they come back into alignment with what God's will is on the earth. And how do you find his will? You find that in communion, speaking to him, he'll give you the rhema word, but you also find it in the Bible. And when things are not happening the way they're supposed to happen on the earth, it is your responsibility as a believer in Jesus Christ to change things. And you have the authority in the words that you speak. God created through words and you are made in his image and likeness. That means that you create in the words that you speak. And in this year, 5780 or 2020, it's the year of the mouth. So your words are manifesting with greater authority and and acceleration than they have in seasons past specifically because the Lord knew everything that was going to be happening in this season and he was expecting the body of Christ to come into you know knowing how to speak with authority knowing how to speak to decree knowing how to speak to create and that's another thing about um, speaking to create and making decrees. When you are making a decree as a believer, you have greater authority than somebody who does not believe in Jesus Christ. So you can overwrite anything that's spoken against you, anything that's spoken against your family, anything that's spoken against any area of authority that you have. You know, if it's a big on a bigger scale, like if you're making decrees for the nation, it, it generally takes, you know, a couple of believers or more getting together to make the same decree. That's fine. You should be able to find another believer who can come into agreement with you and make some things happen for you. All right. So that's one of the things that we're going to do a little bit later, but talking about specifically about prophetic alignment. Okay. So God has kept me in the loop all these last couple of months and given me um, heads up about what to do and what to pray before a lot of this stuff has come to pass. So back at the end of February, and um, Patty and I were talking about what we wanted to do for ministry in the days ahead. And um, she was like, well, I think we really need to start praying something specific about student loans and things like that. So she and I got together. We start praying about student loans. We start decreeing debt cancellation for student loans. And now look what's happening. Um, student loans are being deferred for six months with the interest being deferred for six months. And those are things that she and I decreed. And we have the podcast where we are praying for all of that stuff. So we were doing that back at the beginning of March and the end of February. So the Lord gave us the heads up about taking care of student loans. And not only that, the great thing is I read yesterday is that now um, forgiveness applications are being um, sent out to people. So the Lord had us praying for student loan debt cancellation. And now it's coming to pass and it's coming to pass on a large scale. God doesn't do anything in the earth until somebody prays. That's how it happens. Adam, what he did back when he gave um, Satan dominion, Adam and Eve, when they gave dominion of Satan to the earth, what they did was they broke covenant with God and they said, okay, so now we are under the dominion of Satan. That's why Satan is called in the Bible, the ruler of this world. He's in control of this world until you become a believer in Jesus Christ. When you become a believer in Jesus Christ, you're no longer under his dominion. You know, you have broken covenant with him and now you come into covenant with Jesus Christ and the father. Okay. And one of the reasons that we we have so much fighting going on on this earth is because Satan is the God of this world. And what does he do? God told us what he does. He steals, he kills and destroys. So anytime you see stealing, 
you know, um, destruction, theft, any of that stuff, killing, murder, all that stuff, that's all coming from the demonic camp. None of that stuff is coming from the Lord. That's not how he operates. That's not how he functions. He functions to give you life abundantly. That's John 10, 10 for you. All right. So anytime you are, um, under some type of blessing, it's because you have submitted something in your, in your life to God's dominion. You've said, okay, Lord, this is an area that I want your input in my life and I'm willing to do what you say, you know, for it to exist. Now, some people say, you know, there's, there's, um, um, a gray area where there are things that happen that don't have anything to do with God and don't have anything to do with demonic. And I so wish that that were true because it would be really easy. But the Bible doesn't say that either. The Bible says that if you're with Jesus in an area, you're with him. If you're not with Jesus in an area, you're against him. So, um, you know, it's right, right out of the mouth of Jesus. You read it in the Gospels. So you can't say that there's a gray area. It doesn't exist. And with all this political stuff going on, I see into the spiritual realm real good. And I'm watching the news sometimes and, you know, I'm listening to what the people, the natural people are saying. And then the Holy Spirit will say, blah, 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 blah. You know, well, this is the actual truth and stuff like that. And I usually try to stay out of all of that. But the Lord was telling me a couple of weeks ago, he was like, you see in the spiritual realm, you need to explain things to people. And I was saying, well, how am I supposed to explain this to people? And he said, talk about networks. People understand networks. So just like God has a network of believers and churches and all of that stuff all around the world, we're all kind of separate and individuals, but we're all connected by Jesus. We can be connected by prayer and stuff like that. Well, the demonic camp has the same thing going on. You know, there are actual individuals who pray to Satan and demons just just the way we pray to the Lord and stuff like that. And they have their network operating in the world in direct opposition to God and his network. And the way things are happening and accelerating in the earth, we can't really continue to deny that there's a gray area and everybody's not on one side or the other. It's, it's, I, we've moved beyond that, um, trying to walk under a veil or trying to just, you know, live our lives and do that type of thing. So like I said a little while ago, this is like my season because this is stuff that I've been saying for a long time. Take authority, take dominion, take authority, take dominion. And we have the right to do that. And we have all the tools that we need to do it. And if there's something that we don't have understanding about, all we have to do is ask Holy Spirit and he will tell us what it is that we need to do. Okay, so that was the first thing um, that I can remember is that the Lord had us focus on student loans and student loan debt. And now we have this historical um, changes in, in what's going on in student loans happening in the earth, you know, so that's awesome to be a part of because there are a lot of people out there that are angry and confused and they're making wrong decisions because they're weighed down under this debt that they feel like they're going to be under for the next 20, 30 years in addition to wanting to buy a house and all that stuff and they don't know how to get out of it. Well, God is all about supernatural debt cancellation. He talks about it all over in the Bible, Colossians 2, 13, 14. If you have debt that um, you would like help with, you declare those scriptures and the Lord will help you there. And also in Isaiah 61, and Jesus repeated him his, himself, he said, the anointing of the Lord is upon me. He's brought me here to set the captive free, delivery of sight to the blind, all this stuff, and to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. What is the acceptable year of the Lord? You go back to Leviticus, the acceptable year of the Lord is Jubilee. What happens in Jubilee? Properties are returned, debts are canceled, slaves are made free, right? So all kinds of scriptures in the Bible that talk about supernatural debt cancellation, but we don't want to part we don't participate in it for whatever reason. A lot of it's unbelief. A lot of it is that because things take time, and they have to be done according to your faith, which has to be built up by you believing what God says, right? That's how faith comes. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and continually hearing the word of God. So you can't say, oh, yay, God's going to supernaturally wipe out this debt for me. And then the next day say, shoot, I wish I didn't have to make this payment. This causes so much stress in my life, blah, 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 blah. You've just canceled out the word of God that you've been speaking. You have to have so much word of God in you that you're speaking the word of God and not speaking what you see or what you feel, you know, things that are temporal because they are subject to change, whereas the word of God is not subject to change, right? So he told us to take care of student loans. So we prayed that great things happen in that arena. Um, the next thing was, and I'm, I don't know if these are in the right order, but another thing was, is that um, on March 30th, I had a dream that um, President Trump, I met him in a park and um, he had a baby with him that had his face on it. And, but it was a baby. So it had an adult face and a baby. And the, and the Lord was showing me in that dream that, that, um, President Trump was working a lot on sex trafficking, which he has done a ton of work 
um, on sex or, or human trafficking, I'm sorry, human trafficking in the season. You know, there were um, a lot of, um, there's a lot of right now, if you go and look on a couple military sites, you'll see where there are some Coast Guard um, ships and all kind of U.S. military ships stationed between um, the, the California and down into South America. And what they are doing is they are, um, they are um, flagging anybody technically because of the virus, but they're flagging any ships that are trying to move toward the United States. And once you get into a certain area in the water that's considered, you know, their area where they can check you, they have been finding all kinds of drugs. And we know that drugs and trafficking is how a lot of human trafficking is, you know, paid for and taken place and all that stuff. So he's doing a lot of things in that. So the Lord gave me that dream. So we are praying for that. And, um, you know, that's one of those big areas for Patty. She's really interested in that type of area. So we prayed about that thing. And then um, the very next day, he gave me a dream with my mentor, Chuck Pierce, in it. And Chuck Pierce gave me um, Psalm 50 and Psalm 26, which were about the Lord's justice going toward other people. And then God's justice coming to the body of believers, people who are following him and stuff like that. And I've had some amazing instances of justice, things that I've been praying for, for a long time and forgiving for a long time, but also at the same time, which is okay saying, Lord, you know, I forgive, but at the same time, you know, I still am expecting your justice to come to me and justice is coming to me. So it's really good in this situation. And you see God's justice and judgment taking place in the world as well. A fantastic thing that happened just today, um, President Trump said that we are temporarily defunding the World Health Organization, which is awesome. That organization is completely in Satan's demonic network. The UN is in Satan's demonic network, all kind of stuff. So when he's doing these things, you know, a lot of people are freaking out and all this stuff. But if you look in the Bible, look at the old, um, it, look in Second Kings, Second Chronicles, and um, First and Second Samuel, you'll see all kind of stuff. Yes, ma'am. Uh, John 10, 10. I did re reference Colossians 2, 13 and 14 for debt cancellation. And then also um, John 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. And I've come to give you life abundantly. Um, so the, um, the World Health Organization and stuff like that, it's a, well, it's called World Health. You know, that's all in Revelation right there. Anything that's like global and stuff like that, you have to really take a discerning look at because God says in the Bible, it is I who establishes the boundaries of the nations, right? God doesn't want any one world systems happening. That's not how he operates. He's all about freedom. And one world means that you have to do what, what one governing set of people is telling you to do, and it doesn't work. That's one of the reasons that the United States is, States is such a favored nation, because it's broken up into little pieces and little parts that all come together and become something, right? And then... Um, you have to look at, um, always have to look at Israel, look at what's going on in Israel and you kind of get an idea of what's going on, you know, with the rest of the world and stuff like that. Look and see what Israel's doing because what God does there, a lot of that stuff affects us. Why? Because Israel is God's nation. It's always been that way and it will never change. Right. And that's another reason that we, um, see president Trump being a blessing to Israel. So we know that he's doing a lot of things that that God wants done. And like I said, if you are, if you would read in the, the, about the old Kings and the prophets in the new Testament right now, you'll see a lot of the things that they did. President Trump is doing right now for the United States It's absolutely amazing and crazy to watch. I was talking to Zane about it just a little bit ago. I was like, look at this, that he just did today right there. It's in, you know, it's in the Bible, something that happened all these years ago is happening again. And it's quite amazing to be alive during this season. But, um, so those are the things that the Lord has um, has given me a heads up about, a prophetic heads up about before they came to pass, talking about praying for the student loan debt and look at what's happening in the world. Amazing things happening in, um, because we prayed for that. And then the next thing was um, human trafficking is, is being conquered, even though all this other stuff is going on. Um, there's still good stuff that's going on in the earth and we want to be sure that we're celebrating those things that God's doing. And then the other dream about justice, justice on the earth, or I'm sorry, judgment on the earth and justice coming to people in the body of Christ. So if somebody, you know, has been harassing you for decades or anything like that, like in my situation, this is an opportunity for you to have justice come to you. Okay. And then another thing that he gave me a heads up about was the law of multiplication. And I have a little ebook on it that you can download. It's 
two dollars and it's going to be a blessing to you it's two piddlywink dollars it's not a lot and it's only like seven or eight pages to read but it will be a blessing to you god told me like before they shut things down and people start losing work he was like you know you talk a lot about sowing seeds and people understand that but you never talk about the law of multiplication the law of multiplication i've been working that law for a long time but i've really been working it in this season because I didn't want to have to experience any type of decrease. Like all the time, I speak to things all the time and tell them to multiply. Like when I buy makeup, because I like expensive makeup, like Lancome and all that stuff, which is not cheap. You know, one little, the Defensil, whatever it's called, mascara that I use is like $30 for a tube of mascara that's gonna last you two months. And so I always speak to that stuff and I command it, multiply in Jesus' name. And I always get usually, you know, like six months out of my mascara instead of only two months, which is generally what it would last. But um, I speak to things and command them to multiply all the time. But that's one of the things that God told us to do back in the Garden of Eden. He said to um, replenish the earth and multiply and increase. And a lot of times we just assume that that means having kids. But you have to understand that when God gives a dominion mandate like that one, that's so large as that one, it's all encompassing and includes more than just having children. And proof of that is that everybody doesn't have kids. So why would God limit anything that he says to people you know, that is about getting better, right? That is about doing more. It doesn't make any any sense. So when you study out the Bible, the Lord will give you greater understanding, but there are also Hebrew and Greek concordances that you can read that will give you greater understanding as well. If you don't have access to those things or don't know how to use those things, I'm telling you, Holy Spirit will tell you anything that you need or want to know ever, you know, and he's always with you right there. You just have to ask him. Okay, so the law of multiplication is something that we can work in any season, and it's something that the body of Christ needs to be working in this season. And as people try to put more and more restrictions on you, like right now, Bill Gates and, of course, his cohorts are trying to say, we don't want anybody going back to large gatherings unless they've all been vaccinated. Okay, well, we, we don't need to take that vaccine. Uh, vaccines can be dangerous. He's testing vaccines in Kenya right now that are killing people on large scale. But, you know, they have a large population and nobody's sticking up for them at the moment. Things like that shouldn't be happening. And even though they are, you know, and the body of Christ, we think that we're going to not be held accountable for this stuff we're not you know one of the reasons potentially that this virus had been allowed to come into the United States is because we are you know kind of dropping the ball as the body of Christ we is, that's not supposed to be going on the Bible says the Ecclesia is the governing body of the earth representing Jesus Christ that is our responsibility unjust laws we're supposed to make sure that they're overturned anything that doesn't line up with Isaiah 9 6 justice and righteousness anything that doesn't align with those two things we are responsible as the government government to overturn a lot of stuff you know people say well God's gonna do it because he's sovereign no that's not how it works he put Adam and Eve in the earth and said I've given you dominion over this this is yours I want a relationship with you but how it functions my hands are off until you until you ask me to do something with you until you that's why we have to pray until you invite me to do something with you right you know we try to say that um you know well god's sovereign he's going to do some things no anything even that he wants to exercise sovereignty in he has to deliver the word to um somebody on the earth and allow them to pray it and decree it out he doesn't just come down here and do anything if he did would our world be this mess no he wouldn't allow it he put us in eden specifically because he wanted us to have a fantastic I'm trying to stop fam saying fantastic because it means unbelievable, beyond belief. I'm trying to say uh, in a wonderful environment in Eden. He said, this is what I want for you. I want you to have, you know, communion with me. I want you to be walking in my glory. I want you to, you know, experience the joy of being alive and all of that stuff. And it changed because Adam and Eve said, you know, we're going to listen to this deceiver over here for a little bit. And that messed us up. You know, that's one of the reasons that we tithe. A lot of people don't understand tithing. You do not have to tithe. It's a benefit for you. And this is what happens. Because Satan has dominion over the earth and has since Adam and Eve gave it up, what your 10% does is it signs a contract with the Lord, a covenant, which is stronger than a contract. And it says, I am inviting you to take care of those 90% of my finances. I'm coming into contact, into agreement with you. I'm signing this with you, saying, you, please come in and do those four things that he lists in Malachi 3.10. 
um, 3, 10 through 12 for that 90%. So without that tithe, you don't have that protection and the Lord's not rebuking the devourer for your sake, right? Same with giving. Why do you sow? Sowing is the sowing and reaping is the financial system God put in the earth. This is Genesis 8. He said, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest, winter fall, da, 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 all this stuff, right? He didn't put the monetary system in. If you look and see when Abraham and all those people, the patriarchs back in Genesis, they were using money, gold and all that stuff because that's what the pagans used, right? That's why the monetary system of the world is called the Babylonian system. If you ever want to step out of um, the Babylonian system and prosper God's way, you come into the system of sowing and reaping. Okay, well, most of us are not farmers now, so we sow money because that's what we work for. That's what we exchange for. But God's financial system is sowing and reaping. That's why you never have a limit on your income. You never have a limit on your increase ever because anytime you're willing to sow, you have just come into contact or contract covenant with the Lord for a multiplied harvest on that because when you sow a seed you don't get the same back right and then if you are if you know how the kingdom works and de and can declare all those other scriptures and things on there you're gonna have multiplication and things beyond you know what you what a normal seed would bring to you you know it's I have a video on that that talks about that before you know there are it's called three things about sowing and reaping maybe but it talks about that and it says that if you, you know, the, God told me a long time ago, he was like, the reason that companies like Amazon and all that stuff prosper big is because, you know, they're offering free shipping and stuff like that. And because of the way spiritual law is set up, what that does is that makes them legally eligible to receive a multiplied harvest. Anytime you give, you become legally eligible to have people give back to you. That's Luke 638, right? It says give and it will be given to you. Press down, shaken together, good measure, all of that stuff. You give according to spiritual law, you become legally eligible to receive and other people, whether they realize it or not, become legally eligible. Um, responsible for giving to you. That's why people shop with you and spend with you and things like that. That's God's system for us. And when you get into that system and you step out of Babylon, you know, you're, you're not worried about, you don't hate going to work and stuff like that because you realize, you know, this is providing seed for me to sow, to increase my income and do all the things that I'm going to do for and with and through the kingdom, right? I don't know how I got off on that. I apologize. Okay, so let me go back to the to being prophetically aligned. So again, these are the things that the Lord gave us a heads up about to pray for before they took place. The wonderful things that are happening in the student loan community. Um, praying for the law of multiplication because the body of Christ needed it. The Lord was like, you need to share that. So I shared it, got it out there. It's working, right? It's working. Patty and I today, we we're like calling angels to bring us money. And here we are getting money like within 11 minutes you know, because we're working spiritual principles. Um, another thing was the human trafficking, people being delivered out of that. The Lord gave me a heads up about that in the dream, about justice being delivered on the earth and um, judgment being delivered on the earth to and for us, you know, large scale and small scale. The Lord gave a heads up about that. Um, all kind of stuff he's been letting us know, boom, teaching us about it, teaching us about it, teaching us about it before it's happened. He's helped us to de decree and pray the right thing so that we have not had to experience any type of loss in this season, right? The blood of Jesus, all of that stuff. I was um, talking about that a couple of weeks before all this virus stuff came about. Now everybody's concerned about the blood of Jesus again. Yeah, well, we should have been working that in the beginning. It's always, always, always been available for us. And we don't want to forget that ever. The blood of Jesus is powerful. You know, the blood of Jesus is powerful. And then faith. Do not forget faith. Faith is your heavenly currency. With faith, anything is possible for you. You can have everything that you need. Absolutely everything. All right, I'm going to let you go. I have lots of products, resources, and videos available to you. You can go to supernaturalinfo.books and get some information there. Um, lots of good stuff. I have, oh, another thing. Today, I was talking, I mentioned it briefly, but um, President Trump defunding the World Health Organization, like I said, which is on, uh, it's in the demonic network, so it's a good thing that he did that. But um, I have a teaching that's called the Currency Exchanger, and the Lord showed me this back in um, December 2015. My friend Misty sent me a prophetic word about being a currency exchanger, and as I prayed about that, the Lord was showing me um, in the spiritual realm, for the natural realm, there are um, like roads in the spiritual realm, right? And, and underneath the ground, there are um, 
um, like roads that that money can travel on and most of them are demonically held and so the Lord was teaching me how to you know stop a demonic supply line and bring it into the kingdom of God so I share that in that teaching and that's exactly what President Trump did today so we need to pray for him like him or not you're called to pray for your leaders but we need to pray for him specifically because he halted a demonic supply line the United States have been giving um, 400 and more millions of dollars to the World Health Organization who have been favoring China, who just dropped this virus on us for decades, right? And he just halted money, our state's money, our United States money going into a demonic network. And so we need to pray for him, declare the blood of Jesus over him, declare bloodline around him that cannot be crossed but upon pain of death because he's doing something that the Lord um, wants done, right? And um, so you can learn about how to um, de redirect demonic supply lines and bring them into the kingdom that way. If you know, like this is one way that I, I um, tackle demonic supply lines. Okay, I don't cook very often because I'm by myself. So I eat out, which is fine if you can afford to do that. I'm not saying, you know, anything on any, I'm telling you how my life is. So because I eat out and I know about spiritual covenants and stuff like that, when I'm going to eat at McDonald's or stuff like that, I make declarations over that money that I'm sowing into that company because I know, you know, nine times out of 10, if you don't know people, they are, you know, I mean, we know the way this world is. A lot of people are on the demonic network. And so I make decrees over that money that I'm putting into that company so that I'm not subject to any hidden, hidden spiritual covenants that they're involved in, anything like that. But I also make a decree over that money and that um, as it goes forward, my money is anointed. And so that the Holy Spirit is going in there to release light. And that's something that you can do as well. So for instance, we know like what's a company that we know that's totally demonic. Okay, let me think. Well, let me let me bring up this. Like, let's look at a lot of these entertainers, right? Are totally putting out lyrics and stuff like that that don't honor God in any way, shape, or form, right? So you're buying this music, your money is going into a demonic network, right? If they're saying kill somebody, beat somebody, let's have sex with lots of people, that type of stuff, the money's going into a demonic network, right? So you, what you do is you do, if, if you're going to put your money there, I don't know how well that's going to work because you're like, you know, full knowledge sewing into something that God doesn't honor right but you you would normally say you know i'm not subject to any hidden spiritual covenants connected to this, this is a perfect example so i was buying something online or going to registering on a website or doing something you know how they say click these terms of service okay so when you click terms of service if they've like i pray over my website and, and stuff like that and you know a lot of demonic people pray over their websites as well so it when you click yes to the terms of service you basically come into agreement with their demonic covenants or their godly covenants whichever they've put up so when I'm clicking I agree to these terms of service I always decree I'm I declare the blood of Jesus on myself and I'm not subject to any of your hidden hidden demonic hidden spiritual covenants right so that's what you do to protect yourself from that and then when your money is going in there you just like I said just release the light going into the light of Holy Spirit attached to your money going into that place so that you are not funding you know, knowledgeably funding all that nasty stuff. And you may say, oh, you know, you're so paranoid. No, I'm not paranoid. I've been doing this stuff on my own for a lot of times because the Lord has taught me stuff. But in this season, he has said, no more backseat, Zari Banks. You need to start explaining what's going on in the world because darkness is encroaching at a, a, an accelerated rate. You know, they don't want in the United States or in the world, they don't want big openings like people who have lots of money and lots of control like Bill Gates do not want people to be able to go back to churches and sporting events and concerts and all of that stuff without having his vaccine. No, that's demonic. You know, like if you if you don't realize that that is crazy and wrong, then, you know, the, I'm not the paranoid one. I'm not the one who's not thinking right here. You know, that is not okay for somebody who has no political authority, only finances, you know, to try to dictate what nations do. But there's a lot of that that goes on. And now the world is being exposed to it on a large scale. Like it's everywhere. Seeing, you know, him pop up right after like days two days after it was discovered that he had a patent on the cor the coronavirus the covid virus 
um, then he resigned from Microsoft. Well, why did he do that? Because he was trying to separate himself the you know a little bit from from that business because that would have hurt that business when people saw that patent with bill gates's name on it from 2015 saying that he patented this this thing and now he's trying to um trying to uh get you to buy his vaccine you know it would it was too easy with this much technology it was too easy for us to put that together so he resigned from that company and stuff like that you know so we have to wake up body of christ that's why god said no more backseat we have to wake up we're the governing body on this earth we are the only ones who can loose the light of holy spirit into any atmosphere we go into we are spread out all across the world and if we begin to do what the Lord has asked us to do all these times, the world will begin to change, right? Things will begin to change. We see things happening, but look how long it took for a lot of this stuff that's happening in the earth. Look how long it took because such a small number of believers were standing up and trying to release the light and trying to teach dominion and all that stuff. Some believers think we're crazy talking about dominion and talking about finances. Do you understand that Bill Gates, the only reason that he's able to influence the World Health Organization is because of the amount of money he puts into it? If he wasn't putting money into it, they wouldn't care what he was saying. The body of Christ needs to stop being afraid of finances. They need to stop being afraid of increase and in provision. We are expected to do some things in the earth and we can do a lot of stuff spiritually but at the same time we need to be able to do some things physically and then say well that happened because we worked it out in the spiritual you know there there are some people out there no matter what happens in the spiritual realm, they are not going to believe god had anything to do with it until we can have a manifestation in the natural we have to have finances to be able to influence organizations and things around the world you know, other people who do not have God's interest at heart are doing it. So what makes us think that we shouldn't be doing it, right? We don't respond and copy what they're doing it. We do it God's way, but we still need to stop running from finances and things like that. It doesn't, you know, it just, it doesn't make any sense. And then not only that, I read a scripture to us earlier today on this broadcast, Luke um, 19, 13. He said, occupy till I come, conduct business until I come. Business gives you influence, you know, business gives you influence. Speaking of, if you ever wanted to partner with me, I've got a marketplace anointing. I'm telling you, your business will increase huge by partnering with me. That's what I do is I help businesses, boom, 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 do some increase. It's amazing. Like when I go to my bakery, I don't go there every day, but when I go there, it always is super busy. I was, um, I've been out trying to eat at the restaurants, the local shops to make sure that they're getting money in this um, season. And I went to Burger Ranch ho over here in my town last week. And it was so funny. I was at the light and I was like, oh, yay, nobody's in the drive-thru. And then I get up there, pull into the drive-thru right after me. Here come three cars because I have that anointing. I'm telling you, if people come wherever I'm at. And I've seen it happen all the time. Places will just fill up. There'll be nobody around. And all of a sudden I come there and it's too busy. That's one of the reasons I hate going to the grocery store. And I like to go in the middle of the night. But that doesn't really help either. But um, I'm telling you, if you ever wanted to partner, I can help pray your business to where it needs to be. I'm good at that. All right. I'm anointed for that. Not necessarily good at that, but anointed for that. Um, another thing that the Lord um, told us about real quickly before I lose it. Oh, properties and land, properties and land. That's another thing. In the midst of chaos, I was having this dream, complete chaotic dream Thursday morning. And out of that chaos, the Lord spoke these three words. He said properties and land. That's another thing um, that he wants the body of believers to own things. You know, you need to own things. Let me tell you, if you own property, you have authority over every inch of that property that you own, that land that you own. You can determine what happens down the street. You can determine what the city does in regards to taxes on your street, all of that stuff. It gives you influence. Stop being afraid of owning things and prosperity and all of that stuff. If God did not want you to be prosperous, you know, half the, the big chunk of scriptures in the Bible would have to be taken out right? They would have to be taken out. Do you need to be greedy? No, that's not the point, you know, but then that's the thing you have to understand. He set up his earth to, uh, his financial system is set up on sowing and reaping. So if you actually get into his financial system, you're not going to be greedy because the only way for you to truly increase is by sowing, by giving it into the body of kingdom and into other people. So greediness is not even going to come into play 
for you, you know, because if you give, 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 and then you stop giving, then you just start using your um, stockpiles and you have less. It doesn't work that way. You don't have to worry about getting greedy um, with prosperity under God's system. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way because in order to continue in his system, you have to continually give. You know, as long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, that's God's system. So even non-believers and people who don't honor God have tapped into that spiritual law that understands if I give, people are going to be um, giving back to me. That's why people run to Amazon and shop over that free shipping. They're selling millions of dollars in free shipping and they're getting billions of dollars in profits back all the time, right? You could be doing that too. You could be in the same position. The Lord will make that available to you. And if you have God's interest as your primary um, ideal, then he can explode things for you, right? Not just take care of you, but explode things for you. Um, anything you need in this season, the Lord can provide that for you. Jobs are not your source. The government's $1,200, though it's nice, is not your source. Um, God bless you, Marcos, and welcome from Brazil. Um, God's God is your source. Anything you need. I've shared this tons of times before, but back in, I used to be homeless back in 2011. The Lord brought me out of that by sewing. I have a book that's called My Money Grows on Trees, Sewing into Revelation and Wealth. I sewed pocket chains and, and then I started being able to pay for a hotel room, started sewing more pocket chains and writing articles that were like $2 um, for, you know, like a 400 word article and stuff like that. Just kept sewing my change, kept sewing my change. And then, you know, been able to, to get a hotel for a week and stuff like that. And then I was able to rent a room and things like that. Um, sewing pocket change. That's how the Lord will work with you, you know, to get your needs met. Every, most of us all can dig up some pennies at some point to sew something. If we have a need, if you're running out of toilet paper right now, put your pennies in a ministry, give them to somebody, you know, and just say, Lord, I need some toilet paper. I've had an angel bring me toilet paper before. I've had an angel bring me food before. All kind of stuff. The Lord will take care of you in this season. You don't have to fret. You don't have to worry. Um, all, the Lord will take care of you. But the thing is that, you, you know, Jeremiah, it's either 17, 31, 17 or 31, one of them. And then the verse is five and it says, cursed is the man who trusts in man. That's one of the things that the Lord is teaching us in this season. If you've had your faith in your job, in your spouse, in anything other than him, you've had a wake up call, most of us in this season, because you've had to um, let go of those, those natural things that have been, you know, your have, you've looked at as your source. Well, God is your source and he will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And he's not poor. He's got streets of gold, right? And you have to think about God. He's very logical. Like some of the things that he does spiritually, you know, are weirdy to us. But the thing is, is that he um, is not going to put streets of gold for you after you die, but then leave you on earth to be in poverty. That would be like bizarre and ridiculous, you know. And then not only that, you have to understand he's our heavenly father. Does he want you destitute? No. There's a scripture in um, Psalm 68, 8 or either Psalm 68, 6 that says he places the desolate in their own home. So even if you even have a house and you're desolate, the Lord can take you from being homeless and give you a house. And I'm a witness of that. I've had that exact spirit experience in my life. I've had that exact experience in my life, you know. God's word is true. That's another thing you have to believe it. And that's something that I've learned by, I've been spending a lot of time on Twitter because um, people interact with me more there than they do on Facebook. And there are a lot of people out there who are believers in Jesus, but they don't believe the whole Bible. You know, I know there's a lot of strange stuff in there, but like, if you look around the world, the world is strange. People are doing crazy stuff these days. There's a lot of strange stuff out there. A lot of strange stuff out there. And if you can accept the strange stuff that's in this earth, you should be able to accept the strange stuff, you know, that your father's going to do because he's doing it for your benefit. You know, he's doing it for you to grow in intimacy with him, for you to get to know him and for you to um, be able to to take those experiences and carry them throughout the earth. Right. Everything that he does with you, he wants you to show that to somebody else so that they can come into a relationship with him as well. Right. And let me think. So let me review real quickly. So these are the things that the Lord gave us a heads up about before to, you know, to pray and decree before they came to pass. Um, the student loans, Patty and I prayed, started praying at the end of February. We did our podcast. The whole student loan framework is changing in the United States. So we thank God for that. So a lot of people who are under bondage to those right now, 
and God does not want you in bondage. Um, the next thing was um, the law of multiplication. The Lord told me to teach on that. We need that law right now. $1,200 is good, but what happens if you sow it and declare multiplication, it's going to come back to you even more, right? Um, we um, talked about the the human rescuing of human trafficking that was going on. God gave me a dream about that on March 30th, and things like that are happening in larger fashion right now. That's awesome. God gave me the heads up about judgment on the earth, judgment on people who have been hindering and ha and harming the body of believers, and um, you know even justice that has needed to come through for a long time. That stuff is happening right now. He gave me that dream on March 31st. Um, he talked about um, properties and land. I Right before I did this broadcast, I was listening to um, Dr. Rodney Howard Brown, and he was talking about the same thing. He was like, um, I've been praying for properties and land, praying for properties and land, and the Lord's still speaking that. He said, I've been praying for it for a couple of months, and the Lord's still speaking it this week. Why? Because he wants the body of believers to be owning. He wants you out of debt so that you can do what he desires to be done for the kingdom on this earth. Listen, if you... I, I say this all the time. If you didn't have debt, what could you be doing for God? What could you be doing for God? Think about that. Do you think that he actually wants you strapped down by debt, owing anything to anybody when he needs finances in the kingdom? Think about people who are out of work right now. You know, I've been able to sow into people. I, well, I constantly, I try to sow into single moms all the time because I was a single mom for such a long time. But I have been able to sow into people who have been in need. You know, I've given away tons of my products and stuff like that, you know, to people who they need to learn how to give and they're looking to the government and looking to other people to provide for them. Well, if you're a believer, you're not supposed to look at them first, right? Seek the kingdom of God first and he gives you all that other stuff. The Bible is true. Everything the Lord says, like he tells us those things for a reason. You know, he will take care of your every need. But just start thinking about those things. Ooh, if I didn't have this debt, you know, what can I do for God? Start imagining those things with him. And once you start focusing on being out of debt, he'll show you how to do it. You've got promises in the word, in the word after time and time again about how to get out of debt. So many promises in there about how to get out of debt. I've already given you two of them just in this specific broadcast. Colossians 2, 13, 14, and then Isaiah 61, or well, Jesus' version of it in the New Testament, when he said, I'm here to declare the acceptable year of the Lord. What does that mean? That's Jubilee. Go back to Leviticus. What is Jubilee? Debts canceled, property returned, um, and bondage, and debt puts you in bondage. And so that's where you, you know, that's how you can get out of it. The acceptable day of the Lord for you could be any day. It could be a Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. It doesn't matter. You make the decision, work your faith, which is your currency of heaven, and you receive it. All right. I bless you in Jesus' name. I bless um, Donald Trump and his, and his family and all of his advisors. I declare the blood of Jesus over all of us, declare a bloodline around us and over the president and his advisors that cannot be crossed but upon pain of death. I bless and forgive Nancy Pelosi, and I just decree that she is going to submit to the wisdom of God or she is going to be removed in Jesus' mighty name. And sometimes I pray things on my Facebook page and stuff like that. You don't have to agree with me if you don't want to because I'm a little bit feisty, but you have to understand I am getting things from the Lord. I am um, praying and stuff like that based on what he leads me and directs me to do. I am a marketplace ministry and that has to do with the world. It's not just my little audience and stuff like that. So some of the, you know, that's why I get those dreams and stuff like that about big things to pray and stuff. So you don't have to agree with anything that you're not comfortable with, but anything you are comfortable with, definitely um, get in agreement with because agreement is powerful. One thing that I'm going to start doing regularly, so watch my Facebook and Twitter pages, please, and my websites, is we need to start praying for um, um, for uh, privacy and things like that in this nation because they're trying to get out of control and we don't want that. Um, they are trying to cut down on what churches can and cannot do right now, which we see happening, shouldn't be happening at all. Shouldn't be happening of all the things, no other institute that is that has um, decided to keep working is getting fined for congregating except churches shouldn't be happening shouldn't be happening shouldn't be happening and last thing i'm gonna say before i let you go um one of the things that's happening you may not know it is this we know jesus is coming and he's coming soon but a thousand years is one day to him and one day is like a thousand years 
His time is not right now. Satan is trying to speed up his agenda for that end of the world thing. That's why it's important for us to pray because we need to halt his timeline and make sure that what God wants in the earth continues. And God wants the harvest of souls. He wants as many people coming into the kingdom as possible. And that needs to be what happens. We need to tell the enemy no. We have the authority to tell them no and allow God's, um, God's presence to be ushered into the earth right now. All right, take care, take care, take care, take care. God bless you. Hi, this is Zari. If you've enjoyed supping on the Word of God with me today, I invite you to partner with me in this kingdom work. Your partnership in this fertile soil gives you legal access to every anointing my ministry operates in, multiplied, because that's my decree for you. Thank you, and be exceedingly blessed in Jesus' name.